Over the years, there have been many constants here on the channel. I love Nintendo. I really like PlayStation. I hate JRPGs. And Xbox and I, we just don't play well together. But that has changed recently, which is one of the reasons I wanted to kind of sit down and have this conversation with all of you. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here today. I hope that you find it interesting and it kind of helps answer some questions of things that are going on and some things that have happened and things that have changed and, and kind of why they have. So over the years, I have been, you know, a huge Nintendo fan. It just goes without saying that, you know, that's, that's what I've enjoyed is playing Nintendo games. Now, in addition to that, I've also really gotten into um, the Sony ecosystem with the PS1 through the PS5. Absolutely love them. I've never been the biggest Xbox fan. One of the reasons for that is this here. Well, not just this, but this is a lot of it. So I am not a fan of the Duke controller, or this is the S controller, the, the slim one for the original Xbox system. I just, I never felt comfortable playing games with this controller. It, I didn't like the layout of it. I didn't like the triggers on it. I didn't like the buttons, the, the black and the white on here, just... It didn't feel right to me. And even though I wanted to try games like Halo and other things like that, I just didn't care for this. And a lot of this is similar to like the Dreamcast controller. And I've never been a fan of that. Now, fast forward to the Xbox 360. I really wanted a Star Wars edition Xbox 360 because I am a huge Star Wars fan, at least of the original, uh, you know, episodes four through six. One through three are okay. We don't talk about seven, eight, and nine. Um, but even here, you know, I finally did pick up an Xbox 360 at the 2022 Bloomington Normal Game Con. But I hate the controller. I don't like the way they fit, the fit and the feel of it. I don't like the balance of it. The triggers are okay. They're kind of spongy. Um, I hate the fact that you got to use double A's or rechargeable double A's on this. Just not the way I want to play games. Now, a few years ago, my father-in-law actually ended up purchasing an Xbox One for the grandkids. Well, they ended up not using it. So he's like, you want it? I'm like, okay. So I've got a Call of Duty Xbox One, and this controller is okay. It's definitely better than the Xbox 360 controller or the original Xbox controller, but still not a big fan of it. I, you know, the, the triggers are good for racing games. You know, didn't like the analog sticks. I didn't like the button plate, just not the way I wanted to play. But I also upgraded then to an Xbox One S behind me in 2020, I believe it was. Now, that was kind of a nightmare. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked for you right up there. Um, it was a cockroach hotel. I got that for 50 bucks, I wanna say, is what I paid for that. And man, I've had to go through and clean it. It was disgusting. No, I will not clean your Xbox if it has cockroaches and whatnot in it. But in 2021 on Black Friday, they actually had a deal on this here. This is the shock blue controller for the Xbox Series S and X. And it's also backwards compatible with the Xbox One line of systems. And the date, I have to say, this is probably Microsoft's finest controller as far as their standard controllers. Yeah, I know they've got the ones that are like you know, $130, $150, $200. For us mere mortals, this is really quite a good controller. And I had actually bought that Xbox One S because I wanted to play Game Pass games on it. And uh, I've talked in the past about how, you know, for me, I didn't feel like the Xbox generations mattered a whole lot. Like, once you got to the Series S and X, and then going back to the One S and One X and Xbox on PC, you can have a lot of the same gameplay experience. In fact, you can play the exact same games on each of those systems, and the only thing that's going to be different is going to be the quality of the graphics, the fidelity, frame rate, things like that. But the core gameplay, same, same. And, you know, I was not a huge fan originally of Game Pass, and part of that is because I didn't have that legacy of being involved with that library. I didn't care. Like, I don't care about Bethesda games. I don't care about... Halo and Gears of War and you know I've always been curious about them 
but I've never been invested. I've never played them. So a lot of what the library offered on Game Pass just didn't do it for me. Now, um, in 2021 and actually 2020, number of stores Black Friday had deals where you could get three months of Game Pass for like 20, 25 bucks. So I bought several of those cards and when those ran out, I just let it go because I wasn't using it. My Xbox One S just sat down here in my basement and I never used it. So it was one of those where like I had it, I never used it. I could still play the same games. They just may not have looked as good on the One S as the uh, Xbox Series S and X. And then in the spring or early summer of 2022, I saw this on our local Facebook marketplace. A uh, local kid going to college was selling an Xbox Series S for 75 bucks. A really good deal, especially considering it had the box, it had the controller, it had the HDMI cable, and uh, I think it even had the USB cable. I'm like, you know what? For 75 bucks, see if he'll take 50, and he did. So I got this for 50 bucks too shabby. Got home, hooked it up, powered up, connected my HDMI cable and everything to it, and I didn't get any video out of it. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I've actually replaced HDMI ports on the back of these or on the back of the previous generation Xboxes with no problem. In fact, the Xbox Series S, I'm sorry, Xbox One S, I hate the naming structure. The Xbox One S playing behind me that's one of the reasons why the seller sold it so cheaply is because it had intermittent HDMI issues. So I thought, you know, if it's the same issue with this, I can fix it. But then I really started to think about it. It's like, you know what? By the time I had bought this, the Xbox Series S and Series X hadn't even shipped for two years. I wondered if it was still under warranty. So I typed in the serial number on Microsoft's portal, and I'll be damned, it was still under warranty so i packed it up shipped it off to them a couple weeks later i got a box back in the mail they sent me a refurbished unit probably brand new or something that had been smoke tested or something along those lines but the serial number was different from the one that i'd sent in to this one here hooked it up worked perfectly it was marvelous so essentially i got a as new xbox series s with the matching white controller and a box for $50, which is pretty stinking cool. So let's talk about some of the games that I've now gone ahead and, and gotten to enjoy on the Xbox Series S. Now, there's a lot of games on Game Pass that just don't do anything for me. Like, you know, I, I don't care about Among Us or Anthem and... You know, there are other ones like Assassin's Creed. Okay, maybe. You know, the Banjo-Kazooie, absolutely love those games. Um, Battlefield, don't care. Um, you know, there's just, to me, there's a lot of filler on here. But in the last year or so, they've definitely added titles that I really do enjoy. Like Black from the original Xbox and the GameCube and the PS2, I think. Um, terrific, terrific game. Uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered, I'm glad that that was on here because I was going to buy it for the Switch. Glad I didn't. Did not like that at all. Um, there are other games on here that are just like, you know, Crimson Skies, it's fun to go ahead and dive in and play it, but not for me. Crisis, don't care. Um, you know, the Dead Space games, don't care. Dirt 5, I've played quite a bit. Dreamlight Valley, uh, actually really, really good. The Bethesda games, don't care. I just don't. It's not not something that I'm into. But now, kind of going back to my home screen here, you know, if you take a look at some of the games that I have been playing, or or let's just take a look at my apps and games real quick. You know, Battletoads, great game. There's Black, like I talked about. Bloodstained, uh, Ritual of the Night. Uh, Boom Boom Rocket is one of them that I haven't played. I want to play. Uh, there's Burnout Paradise Remastered. The Disney Afternoon Collection. I've raved about that in the past, how good that is. Disneyland Adventures. I love going to the Disney parks, and this is one of those that it makes me feel like I'm back in Disneyland. UFC 3, didn't want to buy it, gave me a chance to play it, and I haven't gone back to it. Uh, Gears of War and Halo 4, hey, that rhymed, I didn't even try. Um, you know, got me a chance to play those games, and yeah, I wasn't missing anything. For me, where this really showed its value to me 
is the fact that um, Sony has now brought MLB The Show to Game Pass, basically by mandate by MLB. So for less than what it would have cost me to pick up MLB The Show 22 for the PS5, I've been able to play the majority, well, almost half a season now already I've gotten through on MLB The Show 22, and I do play a full season on here now. I have picked it up since then for the, um, for the Switch and for the PS5 most recently. Uh, I will say that while the Xbox Series S version of MLB The Show looks vastly superior to the Switch, I actually prefer the play control. On the Switch version, uh, other games: Streets of Rogue, uh, Jedi Knight, or uh, Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Played that a little bit. Now, Resident Evil 2. This is actually one of them where I have physically on my Xbox One S. I have not bought it digitally. I'm not going to do that. Um, Super Lucky's Tale, another one, and well, new Super Lucky's Tale and Lucky's Super Tale, or what? Well, the Super Lucky's Tale games, they're great. Uh, and then Ukulele and the Impossible Layer, another fantastic game. Um, you know, overall, just, just terrific. And then today, what just came out is the Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga game. And it's one of those where, you know, I did not want to pay full price for this on the Switch or the PS5 or even buying it digitally on the Xbox. And I waited for it to come out to Game Pass. And it's now here now there are other games that aren't here that i kind of wish that were or follow-ups to previous games like for example f1 2021 loved playing it here on the xbox series s um, i would have loved to be able to go ahead and play that we're going to go back home here i would love to be able to play that through game pass uh not the series s on the uh um on the one s i hate the naming structure um madden 22 was on Game Pass in 2022. We're still waiting on Madden 23 to hit. Now, I understand on those games, they're waiting for you know a window, kind of like what Disney does with Disney Plus, where they wait for titles to go ahead and, and be out and kind of make their revenue before putting them on Game Pass if they're not you know first run games through Microsoft themselves. Now, I will say with the addition of a lot of these titles, I've actually played my Xbox Series S more than any other Xbox I've ever owned. More than my original, more than my uh, 360. I'll admit I've yet to even play a single game through the 360. More than the Xbox One, more than the Xbox One S. Uh, this has actually been hooked up in my TV or in my living room to that TV, and like it's been a constant something that I've played. Now, when my daughter and her boyfriend come down, they play Minecraft on it. I'm not a Minecraft fan, never have been, never will be. But they can play it on here and they can enjoy it. Um, one of the things, again, for me that's just huge is how much better this controller is than any other you know regular controller that microsoft has ever put out yeah i know that they have like the 150 200 the scruff controllers or whomever makes you know those really high-end controllers for the xbox uh series of systems uh, but for me for just day-to-day -day gameplay this is actually quite good now, I do like the fact that, you know, the folks over at Brook Gaming now have their Wingman XB V2, uh, which you can check that video out for you right up there. Um, so I can use a PS5 controller on the Xbox uh, Series S if I wanted to. Um, very decent machine. So if that's the good about the Xbox Series S, what are some things I don't like about it? Well, um, one of the things, although one last thing I do like I haven't hit on yet, size. This thing is small. It fits in my entertainment center beautifully. I love the fact that it's out of the way. It's quiet too. Um, I have not had any noise issues or anything like that with it. Um, storage on here needs to be bigger. It, I, I hate, you know, Great, you gave me a budget level or more budget friendly device and then you gimped on the storage space on it. I would like to see the storage on this doubled, um, especially since the uh, expansion storage is stupid expensive. And one of the things that they did to keep the price down on this that I'm not the biggest fan of, all digital. I, w I wish there was some way that I could go ahead and sync my disc library to this to be able to go ahead and play those games. I don't even want them remastered. I just want to play them all through this and there's no way to do that. Um, and I do wish that there were more, just more titles on Game Pass that I want to play. Um, but overall, 
for fifty dollars, I can't complain a whole lot. I mean, I play, you know, pay more for uh, six months of Game Pass than I paid for the system itself. Um, oh, and and that is one of the things too is this is a revenue generator for Microsoft. Make no bones about it. Games uh, Game Pass is one of the things. I almost said GameStop. Uh, Game Pass is one of those things. It's that reoccurring revenue stream, and it milks the customer for money each month or each quarter or each year. And I really wish that they would. You know, I'm just not a fan of that. Now, I know that it's more convenient and the library is great and they're always adding to it. I don't like the fact that stuff comes out of the library. You know, it's kind of like when Disney launched Disney Plus. Once it's on Disney Plus, it'll never go away until we decide to take it away. Um, I don't like when games come off of this. Uh, but overall, I'm glad that I've got this now. Um, I've been able to do some content about the Xbox Series S as well. I don't have an X. I've would kind of like an X just for the disk drive. I Graphically, this is fine. Um, it is not as good looking as my PS5, I will say that. It is better looking than my One uh, S and better looking than the Switch for sure. But these are just my opinions on the Xbox Series S and kind of my story on how I got my hands on one. Admit it, if you would have seen that kind of offer, you would have jumped at it too, wouldn't you have? Yes, you would have. And even if I didn't like it, it was a cheap enough deal that I knew I knew I could flip and double my money on. So um, glad that I had this. Glad that Microsoft took care of the issue on it too under warranty. And I've actually had a lot of fun playing this. But let me know down in the comments. Have you picked up a Series S, a Series X? Were you like me, or are you like me, where you are you know just a fan of other platforms and? That's why you haven't gone with a Series S. Let me know down in the comments. And if you do have a Series S, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Again, let me know. And I hope this is the type of video, too, that, you know, we haven't done a whole lot of Xbox content because, quite frankly, I didn't have one of these to do content on. But if you like it, if you want to see more, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and let me know what kind of Xbox content you would like to see me expand on here on the channel. Would definitely love to hear from you. Now, if you do want to check and see some of the other videos that we've done, talking about like the you know like the Brook Gaming uh, Wingman adapter, like how we cleaned our Xbox Series or Xbox One S. I hate that naming structure and more. Those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support. Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.